Hello. So let's say that we're going on a hike and on this hike, we notice this lake and um, this lake has one log that is floating on it. Um, and because the log is floating on some water, um, it's pretty obvious that the density of this log must be less than that of the density of the water. And this leads us to thinking, is it possible to calculate the density of this log if we approximate that this log is a perfect cylinder? Well, let's see. So first off, let's draw our log. Um, whew, okay, that's a good circle. There we go. That's probably one of the best um, logs I've ever uh, drawn. So let us label our length as capital L, our radius as a, a lowercase r, and a height um, or our water level, which is just gonna be right here. And let's label the maximum extent of our log above the water level as H. Let's also draw a midpoint as a dot. Okay, so, Hmm, well, let's say that this log is not moving, therefore its velocity is zero and stays at zero during this entire analysis. Therefore, the acceleration of this log is zero. And because F is equal to MA, or force is equal to mass times acceleration, if acceleration is zero, then force, well, the net force on this log must also be equal to zero. Okay, so what are some of the forces on this log? We got the um, weight of gravity or force of gravity on this log, and we also got the buoyant force um, of the water on this log. So to spell buoyant, B-U-O-Y-A-N-T. There we go. So the buoyant force is upwards, and this is the force of the water on the log. And this must be equal to the weight of the log or the force of gravity on the log, right? Okay, well, the buoyant force um, is also equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. And the weight of the fluid displaced is gonna be equal to the mass of the water, mass of the water times the acceleration due to gravity, g. There we go. And this must be equal to the mass of the log, ML, times acceleration due to gravity, G. Notice how there's a G on both sides. So therefore, if we divide both sides by G, the G disappears. So let's do that. So we divide both sides by G. So G is gone and G is gone. Okay, now let's pause and get a drink of orange juice because why not? <sighs> okay, that, that, that's pretty good. Okay. So now we're left with the mass of the water and this is gonna be equal to the mass of the log. Okay, so the mass of the water is also equal to the density of water times the um, cross-sectional area beneath the water level times the length of the log. So that's just gonna be um, the density, which we're only using the letter rho in the Greek alphabet, I think. Um, so rho w, because it's the density of the water, times the cross-sectional area um, below the water level, which is gonna be like this funky shape right here. There we go. Times the length of the log L. And this must be equal to the density of the, um, of the log rho L times the cross-sectional area. And this cross-sectional area will just be a circle, right? And the circle um, is just going to be pi r squared because the area of a circle is pi r squared. Pi r squared. And this is also multiplied by the length of the log. L. There we go. So notice like how there was before. There is um, the length of the log on both sides. So therefore, we can divide both sides by L and get rid of the length of the log, which means that we are not required to measure how long the length of the log is, which is pretty cool. 
And this will leave, leave us with um, the density of the water times the cross-sectional area below the water level. And this must be equal to the density of the log times pi r squared, because that's the area of the circle. So what we're after right here is going to be the density of the log, or rho l. Okay, so we already know the density of the water. So basically, all we need to know now is just going to be this cross-sectional area below the water level. So it's just going to be this shape right here. So let's draw it out. And notice how it kind of looks like a circle, but without like the top part. So we could just get like a circle, right? Pi r squared, and subtract the top part of the circle. Just like just this little bit there. Perfect. Okay, now we know the area of the circle, right? But what do we not know? We don't know this small part that's going to be cutting this um, circle up. So we need to uh, find out what that is. So the small thing is just going to be equal to, let me move this down a bit, the circular sector of the circle. Um, and this is just going to be subtracted by the triangle below. Um, so it's basically an ice cream cone minus the cone, basically. Except that the cone is replaced, that's a triangle. So yeah, now um, let's get started. So let's draw our um, log, but just a bit bigger this time, so it's easier to put some things on the log. There we go. Okay, our log's a bit bigger, but a little bit lopsided, but that'll be okay. So let's make our midpoint right here, water level right here, height above the water level as h. There we go. And let's draw a radius right here. And let's just draw another radius right here to like the left. There we go. So now we got our circular sector and our triangle too. And let's also draw our radius minus the height above the water level because this allows us to calculate the area of the triangle later. Okay, so let's get started with um, kind of finding out how to find this area of the circular sector. So to find the area of a circular sector, um, in our case, what we are going to be doing is going to be getting the fraction of the circle the circular sector um, is a part of, right? Like if it's one fourth of it, maybe it's less. Um, and we're just going to be multiplying that by the area of the circle to find out the area of the circular sector. So let's just um, label our angles, I guess. So this angle right here could be theta, I guess. And this angle right here could also be theta. Why not? Okay, so the um, well, the angle measure of our circular sector is going to be 2 theta. So 2 theta right here. I'm going to divide this by the um, number of radians in a circle, which is just going to be 2 pi. Divided by 2 pi. Okay, perfect. Okay, and this is just gonna be multiplied by the area of a circle, pi r squared. Pi r squared. So notice how there's a two in the numerator and denominator. Well, that's just gonna be equal to one. So you get rid of those, right? And notice how there's a pi in the denominator and then a, and this uh, fraction is gonna be multiplied by a pi. We can also get rid of the pi too. And that leads us leaves us with theta r squared. Now, what is theta? Well, we don't even know right now, um, but to find out what theta is, we can get um, the, well, if we notice that the adjacent to theta is r minus h, and the hypotenuse is r. Well, if we use the r cosine, we're able to make an alternate definition of theta. So, in our case, that'll just be, theta is just going to be equal to the r cosine so cosine negative one instead of, you know, just the parentheses. And then we do the parentheses right here, right? Let's move a bit to the right. Okay. And this is just going to be the adjacent over hypotenuse. In our case, that's just going to be as simple as r 
minus h over r. Close parentheses. Now that we know what theta is, we can now put in what well, we could just factor. Well, we could just substitute this in instead of theta. So that's just going to be the, the area of our circular sector. It's just going to be r squared, r cosine, r minus h over r. There we go. We have successfully calculated the area of our circular sector. Now, how do you find like the top part, okay? All we're missing now is the area of this triangle um, that is a part of the circular sector. When we find that out, we can subtract the area of the triangle, but, um, but well, we can subtract that from the area of our circular sector. And then we can just subtract that, the number that we get, well, not the number, but eh, the expression that we get from that, to pi r squared. And that will give us the area of the cross-sectional area beneath the water level. And then after that, we're home free. It's just the final stretch. So yeah, now let's find the area of this triangle. So to find an area of a triangle, all you need is the base and height. And notice here that we don't really have a base. Well, we have a base, but it's not labeled by a variable. So let's throw in a variable. Let's say that we're just gonna label, um, I guess our base as x, uh, maybe two x in total. So x right here and x right here. Boom. Now that we have a base, everything gets a lot easier, right? Now it's just one half base times height. So let's circle this so that we remember that this is going to be the area of the circular sector, right? Okay, so one half base times height. So one half times the base for one of these triangles is just going to be x. And this is going to be multiplied by r minus h. r minus h. So that's one half base times height. But wait, we don't know what x is. Um, so we need to calculate for x. So how we're going to be doing this is just going to be doing the Pythagorean theorem. So basically what the Pythagorean theorem is, is that the sideline squared plus the other sideline squared is going to be equal to the hypotenuse squared. In our case, our hypotenuse is r squared, and our sidelines is uh, going to be, well, not our hypotenuse is r squared, it's r, actually. And our sidelines are just going to be x and r minus h. So yeah, let's perform the hypothesis, well, the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so x squared for one of our sidelines, plus parentheses r minus h squared, and this is going to be equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is just going to be r squared. Boom, there we go. So now, we just wanna isolate x to one side. So let's keep it on the side that it is, and subtract r minus h squared. Well, parentheses, parentheses, squared. Okay, so x is going to be equal to, well, that's just gonna be r squared minus parentheses r minus h squared. And that's just gonna be square rooted because we also move the squared on x to the other side by taking the square root of the other side and well, taking the square root of both sides. Okay, more orange juice. We gotta get through this entire cup, I hope. Okay, so now let's um, find out what x is exactly. So to do this, we could square what's inside of the parentheses. So that's just going to be r squared minus r squared because r times r is going to be r squared. And notice how there's like a minus sign outside of the parentheses. So that'll just be r squared minus r squared. And what is r squared minus r squared? Zero. I know, crazy. One of a kind of idea, original idea by me. Crazy. Okay. Now, um, well, if we're going to be taking a squared, if we have two of them, notice how we have to multiply r and h and then h and r. So that'll just simply be 2rh. And notice how it is positive, right? Well, notice the negative sign outside of that parentheses, that all changes. It's now negative. So negative 2rh. Now, um, now we got our negative h squared. So what's negative h squared? It's h squared. Negative, negative, positive. So now we got our positive h squared. But wait! The parentheses haunts us again. So now that just be that that's just gonna be changing into a negative h squared. So minus 
page squared. There we go. Okay. So, um, I know it's my mistake, and um, that that's kind of embarrassing, but um, let's say that we write down r minus h and another r minus h. So this is going to be equal to r squared because this and this. Now we have a minus sign to r h, right? Well, I actually forgot about the very spooky parentheses and negative sign outside. So therefore, it's actually not going to be negative to r h. It's actually going to be positive to r h. Let's erase that negative sign. There we go. I did not make a mistake at all. Okay. Now that we know what x is, we could just substitute it back in to our one half. Well, x times r minus h. So let's do that. So, whew, one half times uh, square root of two r h minus h squared, and this is going to be multiplied by r minus h. There we go. Okay. Well, notice that we our well the area of the triangle that we're trying to find is two of these, right? So we are going to have to multiply this entire thing by 2. And that's just because we found out one of these triangles, right? We want to have both of them because this is the area of the entire triangle, not half of the triangle. So we have to multiply this by 2. And notice when you multiply this by 2, the 2 in the denominator and this 2 cancels out. So that will just give us square root of 2 or h minus h squared parentheses or minus h there we go now we found the um orange juice you got a problem life orange juice okay there we go now we found the area of our triangle so let's circle that up now now that we've got the area of our circular sector and the area of the triangle, all we have to do is subtract the area of the triangle from the area of, of our circular sector. And then we're basically on the final stretch. So yeah, let's just do that. So r squared, r cosine, r minus h over r. And this is just going to be subtracted from this. So minus, right, parentheses. 2rh minus h squared, close parentheses, this is going to be square rooted, times r minus h. Okay. So, what's now? What, what's next? So, we found out the like weird thing, well, the height above the water, well, not the height above the water level, the area above the water level of our log, which is just going to be this. Now, in here, we got the circle, pi r squared. We need to subtract this, this big boy, from pi r squared, and that will give us the very important um, the area beneath the water level. So yeah, let's subtract this by pi r squared. So to do this, all we have to do is just going to be um, don't worry, I, I know exactly what I'm doing. So basically, all we need to do is just going to be subtracting this from pi r squared. So we got pi r squared, and we can subtract this, r squared, but we need to make sure that we have a parentheses around this entire thing, because otherwise, we're just gonna be subtracting um, r squared, r cosine, r minus h over r, from pi r squared and not the entire thing, right? So we need to make sure that we have one giant parentheses. So r squared, r cosine, r minus h over r. Subtract parentheses, square root of 2rh minus h squared, close parentheses, open parentheses, r minus h. There we go. So this matches with this, this matches with this, this matches with this, this matches with this. Perfect. Now, now we have successfully found the area below the water, well, the cross-sectional area below the water level. Whew.
Now that we found the cross-sectional area below the water level, we have to multiply this by the density of water. Now, the density of water is just simply going to be a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. That means in every one, in every one cubic meter, there's exactly one thousand kilograms of water. So let's just multiply this by basically a thousand. So we're just, just gonna be doing a thousand, right? Um, so we're just gonna multiply this by. Oh no, that is not what I wanted to do. Just multiply this by. There we go. Okay. Now, now that we got the left side of this um, equation all done, all we need to do now is divide pi r squared to both sides. And this is because the density of the log has to be by its own on one side. So let's divide pi r squared to this. So divide it by pi r squared. And this is the density of our log if our log was a perfect cylinder. Um, we found this out just knowing um, the, basically just the radius of the log and the height of above the water level, H. Thank you guys for watching and I have to finish this orange juice. Um, so yeah. Yo, Dan, I'm done. I think you did a really good job with the orange juice.